Without science, we cannot have development. This is the engine of the human civilization. Professor Chan, you've been called the father of Asian electric vehicles. How did you start your career? I started my career uh, on electric vehicles. That is when I settled down in Hong Kong in 1976. At that time, oil crisis was occurred. The United States issued a law that is to promote electric vehicles. So it inspired me because before that, I already had some research in electric vehicles and I was also very interested on electric vehicles start from my childhood. The most attraction is sustainable development. Or in Chinese, we say that 人和自然要和谐共生. We have to reconstruct our energy to achieve carbon neutrality. Automobile has changed the world, but it also has troubled the world because automobile use gasoline. You know, it is not sustainable. It is not renewable. It causes many pollution in the city. So we have to conduct uh, energy revolutions and automobile revolution. That is the most attraction for me, to devote it to electric vehicles research. What challenges did you encounter during the development of the electric vehicle industry? How have you addressed them now? What is electric vehicles? Electric vehicle is used motor to replace the engine and also the energy. We use electricity to replace the oil and gasoline. So the core technology is the power trains. So my research is focused on powertrains. I have developed the methodology of how to design electric motors, how to design the battery, how to design the battery management system for the electric vehicles. Today, electric vehicles has been so many in the world. The big challenge is several fold. Number one, we should continue the advancement of electric vehicles, uh, the forefront of technology. Number two is how electric vehicles friendly interact with the internet. So electric vehicles become a connected intelligent vehicles. Considering Hong Kong's complex transportation landscape and the need to traverse the sea from Kowloon to Hong Kong Island, and the presence of steep mountain roads on Hong Kong Island, what role do you believe electric vehicles can play in addressing the transportation and environmental challenges specific to Hong Kong in the future? Hong Kong is a very unique place in the world. Electric vehicle has been successfully implemented in mainland China. But however, Hong Kong road condition uh, has its own features, which may be different with mainland China. But Hong Kong standard is international standard. If you can implement electric vehicles successfully in Hong Kong, it means it comply with the international standard. So to cut it short, Hong Kong should develop different kind of electric vehicles, from the private car to the you know minibus public bus from pure electric vehicles with the battery to hydrogen vehicles. Hong Kong should focus on different type of electric vehicles which can satisfy Hong Kong road condition and then satisfy international standard. And Hong Kong can be the showcase of the world. Mm. 
there's the integration of four networks, right? So transportation, energy, information, and humanities. So could you provide a specific description of how people's daily lives would be influenced if these four networks were effectively integrated? What humanity world, physical world, and information world should be linked. After we learn this, I can discover the law. What kind of law? We can make uh, the system uh, very systematic to change the disorder system, become order system. By using this principle that we can make those useless energy or waste energy convert to be the useful energy. The central government, Far Kaiwei, recently has issued documents to integrate the electric vehicle and the grid. This is based on my philosophy, on my theory. So, to cut it short, we have to link the energy revolutions, automotive revolutions, and information revolution. By linking this one plus one bigger than two, we can get more economic benefit and environment benefit. Uh, Alan, Hong Kong University is the oldest university in the world. Oh, the energy science university is also the oldest university in the world. You have to develop Hong Kong University's spirit and cultural connection. This is a unique feature of Hong Kong society. It's also a unique value. You're 87 years old this year. You continue to devote yourself to scientific research. What motivates you to work so tirelessly? Why you come in this world? This world with or without me, what is the difference? So we have to have objective. We should have motivations. If I want to become a scientist, what is scientist? Scientist is to discover. What is science? Science is the truth. It can be implemented all over the world because it is truth. Scientists is to find the truth for the welfare of humankind. If you look the human history, there are three factors of engine. The first is science discovery. Then we can have science and technology revolutions. Then we can have industrial revolution. That is the industrial revolutions make change our life. I hope the youngster uh, should have curiosity, uh, get interested in science and technology, and build up your future. That is very, very bright future. Elden, this is Hong Kong University, ah, electric vehicles, 还有香港的学生，还有国际的学生在这里一起交流。In 2017, you co-signed a letter with 23 academicians from Hong Kong, addressing it to President Xi Jinping, highlighting scientific research challenges. You received a reply in less than a week. Since then, have the highlighted problems been effectively addressed? What significant changes have occurred? And what kind of cooperation and technology has been carried out recently between Hong Kong and the Chinese mainland? I think President Xi Jinping's letters is a great motivation to mainland China, also to Hong Kong. It also has a value of the theory and practice of the one country, two system in the science and technology sector. What is the value of Hong Kong? We have motherland, but Hong Kong should be able to connect the world. After one year of Xi Jinping letter, a billion of the Chinese science and technology finance come to Hong Kong. And Hong Kong already has almost 20 key state lab in Hong Kong. What to do? That is to link the Hong Kong scientists and the mainland China work together uh, to address the
the most challenging uh, uh, global sustainable development. Today, we have to use the science, that is, from the science to the use, from the use to the product to the product. The biggest challenge is to work with China, because China has a need. China is growing fast, and China is growing fast. So, as a researcher, we can provide the best conditions for the research and science. You stated that an individual's destiny is closely intertwined with the country. Could you please share your story about the country's development and your involvement in it? I feel if the country is weak, nobody protects us. Because this is my own experience. When I was a childhood, I have experienced it in different governments. During the change of authority, uh, there's no one protect us because no police at the time. We should have motherland to protect us. We individual cannot alone. We should be linked with our society and with our the country. Mm. We are now experiencing three unprecedented. The first is the country is so emphasized on the importance of science technology. Number two, the country is so take care of scientists. Number three, we Scientists has the opportunity to contribute to the country, to the society, also unprecedented. After the interview with Professor Chan, I, he really gave me the impression that even his age is much more than mine. I could feel that the way that he collected his answers and gave them out, improvised in such a short time, was really impressing and I really learned a lot about science and technology with him and I really have to thank him for spending this time with me. I am so impressed by the Elden question. I think through him, I see the bright future of Hong Kong young people. I hope Hong Kong to be highland of the science and technology development in the world. <laughs>